Welcome to my Find the Intron game. This makes it a little more fun, I think. It's a puzzle, and I want you to use the rules for interpreting uh, gene uh, transcription and translation to come up with uh, some, some of the information that's uh, fundamental to gen genetics. So in this example, I'm telling you that there's an intron, and I'll tell you right now, it's not written here, uh, is that there's a single intron here, and it's in a piece of RNA that would be transcribed from DNA that you cloned. So imagine your favorite gene, you've gone through the bench work and you've got the uh, sequence of it, and you can see the sequence is right here. I've uh, indicated the ends. Uh, ignore that little black bar, that's the cursor when I took a screen capture of this. Now I'm giving you a piece of information that once we express the gene that this DNA is, the protein has an amino acid sequence that's shown right here. And this is going to help you find the intron and I'll show you how. Um, I'm, my task for you is to write out the full mRNA, including identifying the ends, and then uh, you want to assume that your sequence DNA would have had the promoter to the left kind of over here. Uh, the first nucleotide, this one right here, is the minus three position. And I want you to circle the intron in your mRNA. Uh, then finally, I want you to write out the whole polypeptide and label its ends as well. I, I will say here, I should have written in the question that this is heterogeneous nuclear RNA or pre-mRNA if it has the intron still in it. So I'm actually going to give a solution that has the intron in it and also the reading frame after it's been spliced. So I'm going to pause for a minute and uh, you can hit resume when you've had a chance to take a look at this problem and maybe even try to do it yourself for the next few minutes. Okay, so what's the first step to do? Well, what we need to find out is uh, which of these two strands is going to be the template strand that we make the mRNA on. And the hint you have here is there's a promoter to the left, that means over on this side, and that means that this bottom strand, this one running from three prime to five prime, will be your template. This top one is going to act as your partner strand or non-template strand, or in some textbooks they call it the coding strand. I don't personally like that term too much, but I'll show you why they call it the coding strand. Uh, if you look in here, you can see just sort of downstream from that plus one nucleotide, which would be that C, because that's plus one, the G would be minus one, minus two, minus three. Uh, just downstream from that region, we've got an ATG, which when you transcribe it, is going to look like a start codon. We also have inside the five prime untranslated region of the mRNA, this thing called a Shine Delgarno box. That's where the small subunit is going to bind, putting this start codon in the pr proper uh, location for, for translation. Now keep in mind, I'm illustrating this on the DNA and, and I don't think that's very good form. I'm just trying to show you how to dissect this problem. The start codon is not in the DNA, it's in the messenger RNA. And the same with the Shine Delgarno box, that's in the messenger RNA as well. Okay, so when we want to figure out the polypeptides we make from this, we can see that from the five prime end, we're gonna have an AUG start codon. Now keep in mind, I'm only il illustrating the five prime end as if it's free, just for the purposes of showing you the messenger RNA that I'm gonna create. The real messenger RNA is gonna start at the plus one position. It's gonna start with a C in this example. Uh, here's a codon table, and it may be a little small in your video to see it, but you can look up any codon table, uh, and I'll show you where the important codons are. Right here we've got the methionine, right, right here. Uh, that's AUG, and, and that's what we're going to put in this location. We're going to have a methionine there. Now I've decided to label the beginning of this. The amino acids have an amino group at one end and a carboxyl on the other. Right by the T there'd be a carboxyl, and I'm not going to put that in because it'll get cluttered if I do. The N indicates the amino end, and it's the carboxyl that we're going to add the next amino acid to. It'll come in and then go on polymerizing in a, in a sequence. Notice that in DNA or RNA, we talk about five prime ends, and in polypeptides, we talk about the N and C termini. Now, the next location here in the mRNA would read ACA, and if you look on the codon table, you'll find out that's a threonine, and I'll just fill in the rest of these. You know, remember that it's going to look just like the non-template or partner strand, except they're going to put uracil in place of T, wherever we see that. And so if you go through, you see CUC stands for uh, an amino acid, CCA does, and you could just basically uh, replace them with information that you get from your codon table. 
Now, the reason I put cysteine in red here is because when we look at the amino acid sequence that's emerging, remember I said we have a partial amino acid sequence here. I'm giving you leucine, proline, and we see leucine and proline, that's good. But now we have a problem. We, we don't have a tryptophan here, we have a cysteine. And that's our first clue that the intron is going to be in this location. So if the cysteine is there, how can we make a tryptophan codon that would work with that particular location? Well, I pulled out of the codon table the tryptophan, and that's UGG. Luckily, the intron I put in a, a, a codon that only has three letters. Um, here's an important hint. A lot of students looking for introns are looking for them between amino acids, and, and that's not going to necessarily happen, or I said between amino acids, I mean between codons. An intron can occur anywhere, and when we put, when we splice out the intron and put the exons back together, we're going to have the codons reconstructed. So you can put the intron anywhere you want to. It could even be inside an amino acid. Now, if we look inside the codon it takes to make a tryptophan, we start with a uracil there. So I'm just going to lift this up and show you what the you know emerging uh, mRNA would look like. And I've indicated that first letter there, U, as the first letter that we would find in the tryptophan codon. Now, maybe you might want to include that G in the codon. It could be UG from there in the intron starting just after. But there's a consensus sequence that I'll show you in just a minute uh, that helps the cells identify introns. Now here I've brought out uh, what we're looking for for our next amino acid, and that's alanine. Now alanine has four possibilities for the codons, and they always start with GC. So what we want to do is realize that the intron is going to start about here, and we need to find something that has GC something, but we're going to have to have one or two Gs in front of it. So if you scan along here looking for a pattern that's uh, GGGC or something along those lines, you're going to see it over here, GGGC. And, and the third C here would represent this bottom codon over here for alanine. So that will work. And so let's tentatively assign that the, the location. So looking inside where the intron is, some introns have a consensus sequence GUAG with a, a middle adenine that will form a lariat from. And I'll leave you to your textbook to figure out the details for how those uh, introns are spliced out. Now if we fill in sort of the missing parts from here, we can now start to see if we pick up that glycine immediately after we have the alanine. And if we were to make the, uh, the codons sort of right, right out above here, how they would fit, we have the original amino acids that we located. We've got a tryptophan kind of split here. That's why I changed the colors of the letters here. The first nucleotide of, of the uh, codon for tryptophan is U. Then we have a couple Gs here then alanine, then glycine, and glycine, and then we've got a stop codon. And I'm not going to write the word stop here, because that's that's for, for sissies. Uh, put in a, a C for carboxyl terminus to indicate that you understand this is the end of the, of the polypeptide. Remember again, DNA and RNA have a 5' prime to 3' prime description. Polypeptides have a, an N or amino to carboxyl or C direction that they fit in. Now, let's get to the question. I showed you the logic for figuring out where the intron is. Uh, let's write the whole mRNA out, and I've decided to use colors to make it pretty. I'm, I'm sure you wouldn't do this on an exam. Here we've got our five prime end. Uh, we've got our very first nucleotide there, and we know that because the minus three position is what's described here. We've got our start codon right here, the beginning of our reading frame, the end of our reading frame, and right in the middle, I'm circling it like we asked for in the question, uh, circle the intron in the mRNA. And just for fun, I'm going to put in another uh, RNA right here so that you can see what it would look, look, like, look like with the uh, intron spliced out. The question isn't asking for it, so you wouldn't lose points for not writing this out. And you do need to have the full length uh, polypeptide, and that's what it would look like when you're done. Again, pay attention to the 5 prime, 3 prime, and N and C directions for the two different classes of uh, macromolecules. So hopefully that's useful to you, and good luck on exams and your f further work on interpreting mRNA.